Hello, my name's Michael Keneally and this video and its accompanying blog tell you a vast amount about the full moon of July the 21st, 2024. It's really deep stuff. It's so worth knowing about and working with. So the key question to start with maybe is do you feel the need for a fresh start in some area or areas of your life? Are you open to letting creativity and success arise from some needed destruction of certain areas of your life? And in the, all this, certainly the guidance I get is guard your home and your emotions, your emotional stability at this time. You see, the July full moon is a most powerful combination of energies. The energies are really big. In fact, they are energies we absolutely do need to be able to identify and understand and connect to and, yes, positively work with. So we must do the work now to maximise our response to these huge prevailing energies for our own good, to realise our life purpose, to fulfil our potential. The prevailing Mars-Uranus-Algol energy in particular is actually very two-edged and it's the background to this full moon. And although it can prompt us to identify and bring in our needed revolution at the time of this full moon and ongoingly, and work with it ongoingly, the prevailing energy can also destabilise our minds and leave us overwhelmed by the scatter. So we need to be aware of that and do things to make sure it doesn't win. We've got to win. So what we have to do is do our very best to identify our sole purpose and keep to our sole purpose and grow our connection to our soul purpose, our incarnational life purpose, at this fulcrum time, at this chaotic though revolutionary time. So we have to centre and focus and learn better and better what our soul purpose is. Astrology can help. A vision work can help. I've been using both. I'm really pleased at the results that have come up for me at this time. I believe that the nature of this full moon can really help us work with bettering our expression of our life purpose, the life purpose me. Working out what all the blocks are, and they can be so hidden away and take years to come up for us to see. Now, I'd summarise the energies of this full moon according to six main factors. Number one, I see the mix of a Cancer Sun plus at the same time. Neptune in Pisces, they're all sensitive watering energies, Cancer, Sun, Neptune in Pisces. I see them as to be envisioned as a cauldron of healing and inspiration, the positive qualities of Cancer. The concept of the cauldron figures so big in Irish spirituality and every home had its cauldron. But this full moon calls on us to combine that crucial to know about and implement Cancer Sun energy 
with also the very totally different hard-working blacksmith energy of this moon, the moon in Capricorn in Uttarashada Nakshatra. More about that below. But also, in addition to focusing on the sun and the moon, we absolutely must identify and work out how they can apply to our life at the time of the vast revolution driven energies that peaked around July the 14th, 15th at two Vedic Taurus, namely Mars conjunct Uranus conjunct the dreadful fixed star Algol. Don't let us give in to chaos and scatter and immersal in fall of the Roman Empire energies that prevail as a result of negative responses to Mars, Uranus, Algol. Please be aware that we're also called to grow into our own power, proper power, at this time. And that's through us connecting to the power growth potential of Pluto which is virtually stationally retrograde. And Pluto is conjunct the moon of this full moon. But absolutely we have to bring in and respond deeply to the karmic authority of Saturn and Saturn's demands, which are ignore at your peril. You see, Saturn is newly retrograde with very slow motion, so it's super strong in its energy. So we need, as ever, to better and better identify what our karmas are and correct our life and our sense of ourself to be on course for them. Sixthly, we do need to understand Neptune now. Now, Neptune went retrograde on July the 2nd, is now at 5 Pisces. So, Neptune 2 has very slow motion. So, Neptune 2 is powerful and calms its effect deeply. Which is to show up to us whether some of our beliefs, ideals and dreams are fantasy. But positively, Neptune energy used positively is wonderful. And so it's needed vision and intuition, which can help us sort out now and show us what our life purpose issues are and what the path is. Um, you know, I use tarot and shamanic journeying, but everybody has their own methods right for them. And there's a huge twist to that now, because Neptune is, amazingly, conjunct the dreadful fixed star Sheat. Sheat is the most terrible energy of destruction. But through work with that, intuition, the essence of intellect, inspired decision making, correct needed direction taking now, we can use this Neptune Shayat energy positively. Also significant for our experience of Pisces energy, because Neptune is in Pisces, I want to mention Chiron. Chiron the wounded healer is at 29 Pisces, that's sidereal Vedic Pisces. And so Chiron is deep in the Pisces, Aries, Gandanta zone. There are three Gandanta zones. They're the water to fire sign transition points. And the Gandanta zones open us to the reality that this world is in key ways unsupportive. It's even immaterial. But that often terrible realisation can open us to potential and the potential is 
our personal opportunity to see and connect to the divine realm beyond, beyond this difficult realm of Mahamaya and its challenges and delusions. And certainly tantric forms of spirituality and shamanic forms can really help us to connect to deeper truths beyond worldly truths. So having introduced the six key energies, I want to look more, at the, in, more in detail at the energy matrix we're surrounded by at the time of this July full moon. Oh, by the way, to see the Western and Vedic astrology charts for the July full moon, you can go to my Star Wheel Astrology website and see the July month page. It's under the more drop down in the header. The central two energies are, of course, the sun and the moon. And they are in utterly different nature, sign and energy contexts. The sun. Well, we can usefully see this sun is in the emotional, often materially inept sign of Cancer. And so it ties in with the Neptune and Pisces energies. And that's why I see the two of them combining to offer like a cauldron of healing and inspiration. The cauldron of life giving and renewal. We need to work with these qualities and identify the life path issues that are uprising in our individual life now. Don't just cover them over, don't ignore them. But then there's the moon. And in the case of this full moon, the nakshatra, the lunar sign that the moon falls in, is totally different from Cancer. I see it as if you want like a symbol for it, as like the hard working master blacksmith who's ready to go beyond the minimum to achieve now. And we have to balance those sun and moon energies. So I want now just to look at these two central energies a little bit more, remembering that I've typified them as the cauldron and the hard-working blacksmith. Two very powerful symbols that arose in my mind at this time from the ancient spiritual tradition here in Ireland. So the sun. The sun is at four Vedic Cancer. And this full moon therefore has the strong presence of sun in Cancer. Emotional energies of mothering and sustaining, rooted in our feelings and affections. In fact, the mothering we received can actually well, uh, have an imprint in our brain. And for example, if it was difficult, it can mean that we're very tense and nervous all the time. And of course, that's very bad for all sorts of things, all sorts of aspects of our life. So Sun in Cancer energy is important. It's orientated to the latent, the hidden. It is prone to emotional disturbance. It does create super sensitive energy sponges. And it creates the needing of a home. So value your home at this time. The Moon. Okay, as I said, there's these very different energies of the Moon. The moon is in the hard sign of Capricorn, which is ruled by Saturn. And within Capricorn, the moon is placed in the hard nakshatra of Uttarashada, which is ruled by the sun. And the sun in its fullness of power here, the sun in its fullness of vitality, strength and leadership. What a combination is this? Sun and Moon of the Full Moon. Now the power animal of Uttarashada Nakshatra is the mongoose. 
The symbol of Uttarashada is the austere planks of the bed. The nature of Uttarashada is to be sharp and dreadful in an active way. In fact, through translation, the mongoose word means unchallenged victory, the invincible one. That's the energy. So, when you're assessing the energies of the full moon, and your life situation, definitely try to get a better definition of the energies. We can't escape them. Do vision work or attunement to how you're feeling and what these energies are. This is so that we can use each of them for the best in our life now. Do put aside time now to do vision work and intention setting. Learn from this work and this time more about the nature of your life path and how to use these energies to attune better to it, how to express it better, how better to be it. So let's go on to the other four energies. We do absolutely need to know about and do work with these other four factors as well. And these are Mars conjunct Uranus conjunct the dreadful star Algol, Pluto retrograde Vedic Capricorn, Saturn retrograde Vedic Aquarius, Neptune retrograde in Pisces conjunct the fixed star Shiat. If we don't have some sense of them, we're in trouble and we won't succeed in working with this wonderful opportunity for moon. So let's focus a bit on Mars Uranus Algol conjunction. The Mars Uranus energy is tension, it's revolution, it's rebellion, it's also sudden unexpected events. Sorry, sudden unexpected events. It's a struggle for survival. It paves the way for a test of nerves happening. It can bring sudden violent events. It can bring, in fact, gift us sudden application of energy. I want to get it done. It is the urge for freedom. It can bring unusual achievement through extraordinary effort. It offers the birth of courage. Do do the needed preparation and deep delving and decisive decision making to benefit from this transit. Get very clear in your mind. What are your key goals now and in your life path overall? What changes to be, need to be made now? What are your actual needed steps to achieve those changes now? How must you handle them in relation to the other people in your life? How will you handle this growing revolution energy going forward in your life? And as I said, the Mars-Uranus conjunction conjuncts fixed star Algol. Now Algol Mars means we encounter a crisis of some sort now and we need to be aware of our obsessions which can be quite negative and bad for us. This Mars Uranus Algol conjunction can be great destruction but destruction of certain facets of our personality or aspects of our life can be needed. And the terrible star Algol can thereby also give us great creativity. It can be a need for changing one of your current life patterns and one of your day-to-day -day management patterns of your life, or maybe more than one. Are you really adequately open to understanding about what your life path is, open enough to make the right decisions 
certainly get a reading from me if you feel this would help. You can go to my Star Whale Astrology website to book it. Now be aware of Pluto. As I said, Pluto has such slow motion now. So any planet, the slower its motion, the deeper it carves its energy. This Pluto retrograde can feel like a spun out imperative to, for each of us to stand more in our own true power. The power we were intended to have. And to work with any blocks or wounds to our full power that came into our life. Even from the moment of our birth, even when we're in the womb. And incidentally, this full moon at 4 Capricorn 57 is actually conjunct Pluto at 6 Capricorn 42. Saturn. Saturn is retrograde, June the 29th to November the 15th. We are each of us called to learn from Saturn about the karmic imperatives that run our life in this incarnation. And if we're not seeing them clearly enough and not expressing them, and manifest them, well, at the time of a Saturn retrograde, or the Sade Sate period, when Saturn transits through the sign before your moon, the sign of your moon, and the sign after your moon. Or the Saturn transits the eighth house transit, known as Ash Tamashani. Well, part of the result will be that we can feel fear and pessimism, insecurity, even depression, lack of confidence, mood swings. But these are all the wrong response. It's understandable. It has to be worked with. But instead, we have to battle our way to correct perception of our life purpose and our karmas and seek to become that person instead now. Okay, 